What's up guys, John here, and welcome to Baltimore Retro Gaming. And today, we're gonna look at five RPG hidden gems on the PlayStation Vita. Let's check it out. Okay, so at number five, we have Saturday Morning RPG. Ah uh, yes, Saturday Morning RPG, a game that really rings that nostalgia bell for me. Now you might be thinking, John, the copy you just showed us is sealed, it's a sealed copy, how did you play it? Well for you I'd say I actually downloaded the game before I bought my copy, I bought my copy really cheap, and since I already owned it, I didn't feel like opening the one that I already had sealed. So, Saturday Morning RPG was produced by Mighty Rabbit Studios and released by Limited Run Games. And this game has a few interesting game mechanics. One of them, which is very similar to a game that came out around the same time, Cosmic Star Heroin, has this interesting game mechanic where you can only use one command once or every few times per battle. So pretty much wherever your commands are on the screen, usually at the bottom or the top of the screen, you're going to have a list of things you can do, you know, once per battle or a few times per battle. And once that's done, you can either recharge that command or it's done for good, or at least until the next battle. So a couple other game mechanics that are pretty noteworthy in my opinion. First of all is the power-up system or the attack multiplier system in the beginning of the battle. And pretty much what that does is it's a series of quick time events, usually multiple button taps and things like that, to kind of charge your attack so you can give a devastating super attack to your enemy you know usually like for bosses or pretty powerful enemies you know stuff like that uh, and another interesting game mechanic at least something i find cool especially on the playstation vita is the scratch and sniff stickers on the front of your notebook now what you do is you scratch the front of the vita screen or if you're using a dualshock 4 playing on a playstation 4 or a ps tv you would obviously use your uh, analog sticks to do so but the scratch and sniff sticker system allows you to gain, you know, additional defense, power up items, you know, things like that. You can get those if you're fast enough before the battle or before each round. Now, one of the things that really attracted me to this game, and I believe a lot of other people, even before this game's release, was all the pop culture icons and the 80s and 90s movie references and stuff like that in the game. So you're going to see like really, really heavy, you know, back to the future references. Um, you're going to see a lot of like G.I. Joe characters that you battle, you know, things like that. There are other movies and TV shows and cartoon series that it does reference. But, you know, when you're almost 40 years old like myself and you see all these things in a modern video game, like I said in the beginning of the video, it really rings that nostalgia bell for me. So overall, guys, I really like this game. You know, the story's pretty good. Um, the graphics, I think the only thing this game is lacking is it's showing you a lot of this like 16-bit pixel art and then it's showing you like high-res graphics at the same time. I wish this game would have either stuck to one or the other. I don't like all those different graphical differences in the game, but overall combat story, this game has it all. And the only reason it's not number one on my list, like I said, is the graphical differences in the game. Man, that Saturday morning RPG, I had a lot of fun playing that game. Anyways, guys, at number four, we have Tales of Hearts R. Okay, so Tales of Hearts R. Well, interesting story how I found this game. I was actually on break from work. This was a couple of years ago. And I was rummaging through my local GameStop, you know, looking through all the used games, looking through all the Wii games, looking through all the PS3 games. And then I wandered over into the Vita section. And guys, this was at a time when <laughs> GameStop didn't have a huge Vita section, but it was a little bit bigger than what it is now. And immediately I saw Tales of Hearts Art stood out to me. I saw it was a Tales of game, so I grabbed it immediately. And the guy at the GameStop, I remember he told me that Tales of Hearts R was a GameStop exclusive. Now, I know they've done that with a few games. You know, one other one I could think of that's come out over the past, like, 10 years that they published was uh, Xenoblade Chronicles. I do believe there was a run of Xenoblade Chronicles that only GameStop, you know, produced. So apparently they do publish games, and Tales of Hearts R is one of them. So how is Tales of Hearts R? Well, guys, if you played a Tales of game, you pretty much know what to expect. I mean, they pretty much stick to the script in this game. You know, all the, uh, the items that you use to cook with, you know, weapons, you know, even story. You know, everything pretty much flows the way you would expect it to in a Tales of game. You know, the way you hit select and see more of the dialogue between the characters. So I'm not going to say this game's like mind-blowing, groundbreaking, you have to go out and get it. 
but it is good. There is no English voice acting, so it's all subtitled, but that doesn't bother me. Um, you know, I think this was a low print run, so if you're a fan of the Tales of series or you just want to play all the Tales of games, I would strongly urge you to buy this game because I don't know how easy this game is going to be to get in the future. Again, I think it was a low print run, and it is a decent game, and it's a game that's not too expensive. So, guys, make sure if you're out and about, you see Tales of Hearts R, you find it for a decent price, make sure you grab it. Okay, so moving right along, at number three, we have Exist Archive. All right, Exist Archive. Guys, if you've ever played Valkyrie Profile, if you played it back in the day on the PS1, or you played it a little bit later on the PSP, or if you've ever heard about Valkyrie Profile, thought it sounded pretty cool and wanted to play it, well, you might want to play this game first because it is newer and it's probably easier to get than Valkyrie Profile. But yeah, guys, anyway, so the people that made Valkyrie Profile, from what I understand, they made this game too. It's kind of, some people consider it a spiritual successor to Valkyrie Profile. And to those people, I would say, I think you're absolutely right now. There's so many similarities I see between Exist Archive and Valkyrie Profile. I mean, for one, the dialogue from the, the main male protagonist in the beginning of the game is similar to the guy in Valkyrie Profile that has the big sword that insulted the king if you guys have played that game. The way they speak in the beginning of the game is like, it, it's almost identical how the scenes are kind of streamlined together. And then the battle system, I mean, it's, it's still that like turn-based, timing-based battle system, you know, just like Valkyrie Profile. I mean, guys, you know, graphics aside, those games share so many similarities and that is not necessarily a bad thing. I think that Exist Archive is an amazing game. I really loved it. I love the story. And I don't want to spoil anything, but pretty much it's just about you die and some strange things happen. You go to a place you're not sure where you are and you take it from there. I'll let you play the game and decide if you like it or not. But guys, this game was pretty cheap. I picked it up for the Vita for, God, like, I don't know, 10, 15 bucks. And then I got it for the PS4 at GameStop for like 15 bucks. I mean, I loved it that much that I got it for the PS4 as well. Never played it on the PS4, so I don't know if there's any differences between this one and the Vita version, but I own both. And guys, this is an amazing RPG. It's pretty cheap. You know, you might find it easier to play on the PS4. It's probably easier to find that way. And like I said, it's like a $15 game. I strongly suggest you to pick it up. If you're a fan of RPGs, if you're a fan of JRPGs, you know, if you played Valkyrie Profile and you loved it, buy this game there's no reason why you shouldn't own it it's totally cheap totally affordable and i think a lot of people will like it so you see exist archive trust me pick it up at number two we have yee's memories of Celsetta. you know guys when i saw this game at gamestop again i found this game at gamestop and this wasn't recently this was a few years ago you know, I was just as surprised to see this game as I was to see the Tales of game, although I forget which one I found first. But, you know, anyway, guys, I was a huge fan of the Yeez games on the PSP. I mean, honestly, I was a huge fan of the Yeez game that I got on the TurboGrafx CD back in the day. So, yeah, I've been playing the Yeez games for a really long time. And when I saw this, and I know this game, I think, I'm not sure because I never played it, but I think it was released on PC. Maybe not. I don't know, let me know in the comments below. I'm not quite sure, I'd love to find out. You know, I, I could do a Google search, but I'd rather somebody else tell me. Anyways, you know, this doesn't do anything like new and crazy in the series, but it is a good entry. And it's good that the Vita actually got a Yeez game in its, life, in its lifespan. Um, you know, just like any other Yeez game or, you know, not Yeez Origin, that one's a little bit different, but you know, it's this guy ate all Christian and it's about an adventure. He gets put in a situation and he has an adventure and that's all you really need to know about any Yeez game really <laughs> except for Yeez Origin because again that one's a little bit different but guys you know this is another cheap game although this one's probably a little trickier to find because I know people are looking for this game so finding it at a GameStop or something like that might be out of the question now I don't know I haven't seen it in a really long time but I know this isn't a super expensive game I mean if you really want this game it shouldn't cost you any more than like 30 bucks. I don't think it's that expensive. Um, and I don't know for sure, but this might have been a GameStop exclusive. I, again, I don't know. You know, let me know in the comments below. I'm not quite sure. That's the only place I've ever seen it. 
And again, that's actually where I bought this game. I was buying a lot of these Vita games when they were like liquidating them, you know, selling them really cheap, you know, back before there was like no hype for the system and the system was on like severe life support from Sony. Um, you know, that's when I got a lot of these games because I'm a big fan of buying games when they're really cheap and that's why I own the games that I own, you know. But you see this game, definitely buy it, although you're probably going to have to buy it online again. It's probably not going to cost you any more than $30, but in my opinion, that's a $30 well spent because if you're a fan of the Ease games, I think you're going to love this one. You see memories of Cell Settle lying around for a decent price? Again, pick it up. Okay, so what is my number one game? Well, my number one game's kind of cheating because it's multiple games, and that is the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series. Um, there was three Rebirth games that came out on the PlayStation Vita. Now, these are kind of rehashes, or I want to say kind of upgrades to the games that came out on the PlayStation 3, but it's not just these games. I mean, there's many more. There's four more games, spinoffs, and different games that got added to the series on the PlayStation Vita. Okay guys, so this is so many games I had to reference Wikipedia. So the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series, or in Japan as it's known as Super Dimensional Game Neptune, is a video role playing game series created and developed by Idea Factory. The series debuted in Japan on August 19th of 2010 with the video game of the same name exclusively for the PlayStation 3, later re-released an enhanced remake under the name Hyper Dimension Neptunia Rebirth for the PlayStation Vita. Two sequels. Hyper Dimension Neptunia, two other Rebirth games in addition to the remake titles for both of them, and three spin-offs for the PlayStation Vita have also been released. Another sequel on the PlayStation 4 titled Mega Dimension Neptune 7 was released in 2015 and has also branched off into a manga, light novel, and anime media franchise series. Guys, if I told you I had played and beat all of these games, I'd be lying to you, but I have played the Rebirth games and pretty much those are just uh, kind of upgrades to the story and different things from the PlayStation 3 version. Um, that's where I played these games originally was on the PlayStation 3. And the reason I actually own all the games in the series for the Vita, again, I was buying these games at a time where they were liquidating them and they were really cheap. I mean, I remember paying $20 for four of these games at one time. So, um, But again, these are games that are kind of getting trickier to find. I know they've kind of developed a little bit of a cult following. And they're really, really good, especially the story. So pretty much what these games are about is there's these different girls, and every girl kind of represents a different video game franchise. Like, you know, one's Sega, you know, one's Microsoft, you know, one's Nintendo. I mean, they even have, I'm pretty sure they have, like, TurboGrafx-16 and stuff like that in here. And, guys, I really like the hidden innuendos and different references to video games and video game culture that they, they have in these games, and that's one of the reasons why I really love these games. You know, I love getting to a part when there's some dialogue and it references, you know, something in video game culture that I never thought a video game would ever talk about. And they do, and you know, I found myself like Googling, you know, some of the references in these games and like, oh my God, like, you know, there's so many hidden messages and stuff in these games, at least that I've noticed that it makes me want to muscle through the game and, you know, hear everything and Google search stuff and get into the lore of the Hyper Dimension Neptunia series. So I'm a huge fan of it. You might want to buy these games on the PlayStation 3, although they're a little bit different. They're probably going to be a lot cheaper. Um, you know, I know that the, the collector's editions of some of these games, like the Rebirth 1 is... Uh, I don't know, people are asking like 700 for the collector's edition of that, and that, that's stupid money to pay on a video game. But you could probably find most of these Vita games for right around $20 if you look for them, or if you buy them online. And I suggest whether you play them digital, you play them physical, I recommend that you play these games, because if you're like me and you're a fan of RPGs, especially that weird obscure stuff, you're probably going to love these games. They're turn-based RPGs, battle system's good, story's good. I highly recommend them. I mean, they're number one on my list, so I, I feel like they're a hidden gem on the system, and I had a lot of fun with these games. So, guys, if you're out and about and you see any Hyper Dimension Neptunia or any game, whether it's the PS4, the Vita, whatever, you know, buy it. You know, see if you like it. They're not super expensive. And if you like it, then you can start buying other games in the series. But, again, you see one of these games for a decent price in your travels, pick it up. Okay guys, so those are just five games that I actually played on the PlayStation Vita that I really, really like. 
And then I want to recommend to you, because I liked them so much now, there are many, many, many more RPGs on the system, a lot of which I've never played, a few of which I've owned and I'm getting to, you know, as soon as I can, but that I haven't played yet, so I can't recommend them. So there's probably RPGs out there that'll blow these out the water. Unfortunately, I have not played them yet. Now, when I think about PlayStation overall, you know, when I think about the PlayStation 1, the PlayStation 2, and especially the PSP, you know, those systems are so rich and heavy in RPGs and, you know, great series of RPGs that it's almost staggering to think about, like, how many games out there that I haven't played yet, you know, games that take 30, 40, 50, 100 hours. I mean, you know, games like that, like, you know, Persona 5, I put in, I put in work on that game. That game took me a long time to get through. I got a busy life, so the fact that I even can put in the time to like finish a lot of these RPGs is kind of incredible, at least in my opinion. Well, anyways, guys, what are some of the RPGs that you've actually played on the Vita? Or, you know, games that aren't necessarily on the Vita, per se, because some of these games are on other systems, like Hyper Dimension Neptunia. Some of those games are on the PS, uh, the PS3. You know, Saturday Morning RPG. This is on the PS4, the Vita, and the Nintendo Switch now. And... Let's see, what else here? Yeah, Exist Archive. This is out on the PlayStation 4, too. So not all these games are Vita exclusive, but they all are really good. So like I said, guys, what are some of your favorite RPGs on the Vita? You know, games that I haven't talked about that maybe I should be playing, or just some of your favorite games overall. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Now, remember to like this video. Remember to subscribe to the channel. Until next time, peace out.